In this episode, I'm going to talk about a few things related to moving. I'll discuss locating help to move, setting up your internet, and I'll mention a few other related things, such as best way to pay your bills. Let's get into it right after this. Here's your story. My name is Lauren Lau, and this is my adventure in Grand Columbia. When you are moving, there's some practical consideration. How do you locate help to move? Now, you might say, but if I move there from the USA, why would I need help? If you came from the USA, it's very unlikely you came right to a place to rent. More likely, it took a little time to get to know the lay of the land and decide where you wanted to live, at least for a year. During the month or more you used Airbnb or something similar, I imagine you accumulated things in anticipation of your new home. But of course, in my case, I was moving from one place to another. First, you can ask people you know. You may recall in another video how I expressed to you the importance of getting to know people right away. You need to learn sources for things and people that can help you through problems as you adjust. Naturally, they would all agree to help you move. But I would suggest you do not do that. If anything goes wrong, you can lose a friend or a source. When a friend drops a TV and it shatters, things will be awkward from them then on. Yes, you can find cheap labor. You can ask around and gather up a few people to help for very little money. Of course, you will not know them at all, and you have no idea how they will treat your property. There's no reason for them to be careful. Saving that money can get really expensive. I went the route of hiring a professional. I really hate moving with a passion. Just thinking about it makes me queasy. So I wanted someone that would do as much as possible. The less I had to do, the better off it is for me. So I went to the handy dandy Facebook marketplace and searched. I found three that looked promising. I asked a friend if she knew any of them and she actually knew two of the three. I then wrote to them. I used WhatsApp, that's typical here, describing what I would need. And I asked them how much they do. One said they do everything, and I didn't need to worry about a thing. They would even bring boxes and pack. He happened to be one of the guys my friend knew. So then I asked the cost. His price was a little higher, but the other two only carried prepacked items to the truck and back out. One made a point he could not be responsible for any damage. He told me that several times. Under why? I agreed to the 200,000 pesos, which is $53, all inclusive to move me. On time, on the day I arranged, two men in a truck showed up as promised. Now, there are some issues not related to them I need to discuss in my next video. So I'll leave out a number of incidents that happened. Again, nothing related to the movers. So let's say they packed up everything, loaded the truck, drove right to the new place and placed everything exactly as I wanted, including taking apart and reassembling the bed. They did a great job and not a single nick on anything. They were flawless, professional, reliable, and tolerant of some serious delays inflicted on them by others. As I said, next video. What about internet? I had service from Movistar for the past two years. The choices are mostly Movistar, Clado, and Tigo. I went to discuss the move and set up dates a week before the move. They proceeded to tell me that I could only get 10 megabytes per second with them now. I was a little confused uh, for a little bit 
I mean, she spoke so fast, I just wasn't following why. I finally got her to slow down for me. It seems that Movie Star is just now negotiating a new contract for the service lines. I asked when that would be done, and she indicated, <laughs> then said maybe three months. I can't do video at that speed. I already signed the contract for rent. It never occurred to me I would run into this issue. She suggested I go to a competitor. Actually, that was great advice. So I left and walked up to the Tigo office up by the hospital. When I arrived, they gave me the choice of 30, 60, 120, or 240. Not being sure, I signed up for the 30, as it's more than I actually need, and I wanted to see how things went. A week later, I changed the contract to 60. For 60, I was paying less than the 20 I had had at Movistar. The advantage Movistar had for me was extremely consistent and reliable. We'll see how this one goes. And they were having a sale, <laughs> so I don't need to pay anything until November. Sweet. How much? Let me show you a clip. asked when I wanted it. This was on a Wednesday. I asked if they could come early afternoon Saturday. He said, are you sure you want to wait? <laughs> that was a nice surprise, but my move-in day was Saturday. So they arrived on time. I had a peculiar request for the modem placement, so they rerouted the wiring with no complaint or extra charge. You hear that, Ecuador? No extra charges? They were here for about an hour, tested the signal, waited while I logged in, cleaned up, and left. The last thing I will mention is notifying the owner, or the landlord as we say, before the move out. It's typical in South America to require a two months notice. Now in Ecuador, I had three leases, and all three agreed to change the lease to one month. I didn't hear in my last place, but I did have a great relationship with the owner. I did let him know before the two months I planned to leave a month and a half early. Remember, I was on my second year. He had no problem with it and just requested I make sure it was painted, which is another typical procedure when you leave. He mentioned since I wasn't there, he would rent it out, and that would cut anything I might owe. It appears it actually might be rented next week. So I'll be getting my deposit back in full. These may seem like small things, but knowing how to proceed can save a lot of stress and headaches. As much as I hate moving, with the exception of the incident that I hate next video, everything was quick and painless.